Welcome to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast, where today's top influencers and entrepreneurs on the rise share empowering stories and ninja tips to become the fuel that ignites a positive change in your life. Our guests don't simply coast through life. They don't let difficult situations stop them. They set big goals, keep their eyes on the prize, and they're joining us today to share insider secrets you can use right now to step into your power and live your purpose. Now, here's your host, Christy Rafino. This is Christy Rafino. Welcome to our Overcoming Mediocrity podcast. And today I have Isabel Drawn with us today. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you, Christy. Hi, how are you doing? And hi to your audience. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I am really excited to be here with you because I know we met probably about a year ago, but we really never connected, right? We saw each other. We were at a similar event and then we went on our merry way. And then about two months ago, we were just uh, like, I was fortunate. I don't know how you felt, but I was fortunate to be at an event where I met you and so many other amazing people Me in too. a four day intensive where we really got clear on our signature talk. And it was just, it was rough, but it was uh, transformational at the same time. And I really got to know how awesome you are. You're just an amazing woman. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And you're correct. We met prior to that. And then this time we really got to connect when we did that immersive, as you said, it was intense. I loved it, but I just, I, I love what it did for most, for most of us, if not all of us, right. We became closer and now we're here doing a podcast together. Yes. and empowering people. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for taking time. I, nobody knows this, but this is the day before Thanksgiving sure and is. we're both, we're talking <laughs> about how much cooking we have to do today <laughs> or tomorrow, but I want to definitely thank the you. The life of a woman. <laughs> yes, we're doing it. Um, and so I want the audience to know a little bit about you uh, by reading your bio, and then you're going to share your story and it's very powerful. So, um, Isabel is a life transformation, mental fitness coach, and spiritual mentor. She is also a podcast host. And of course, we just mentioned a speaker. She's a mother, wife, and entrepreneur and the founder of Loud Whisper. She specializes in helping entrepreneurial women who, despite their success, have lost touch with their core of their being and intuition. And that's, that's big. So Isabel empowers them to connect to their hearts and reignite their voice to become free. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. It's all about freedom, right? Yes. Freedom. We need women to be free and become free. So I'm very passionate about this and this is really my calling. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so that leads right into your story. Thank you for setting that up perfectly. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, so you're, why are you so passionate about this? What happened in your life that brought you down this path? You know, um, thank you for asking that. It's pretty interesting. Um, I've lived through so many life experiences and just like a lot uh, many people, and I understand pain, but my story is a little bit different. I'm originally from Tanzania and Zambia, which is the Eastern and Southern part of Africa. And um, I grew up around very resilient, when I mean resilient, courageous women who did whatever it took for their families. I mean, some of them were business owners or they had really good jobs and some of them really were selling tomatoes in the market. And for me, they're entrepreneur women. They just didn't have a Rockefeller building. So I grew up as a young child watching these resilient women and not even knowing. So I moved to the U.S. Not, not that I didn't know. So when I moved to the U.S. around the age of 19, I came here 8,000 miles away, came for school. And guess what? I found myself pregnant. Oh. I became pregnant. Yes. And um, I was about to become a mother who needed her own mother because I was still a child then. But what I think how this whole thing resonates with me is that um, something inside of me clicked in because I was experiencing a lot of abuse in my relationship. And I knew one day I just prayed. I said, God, if you get me out of this, if you truly get me out of this, I will make sure I take care of this child and all will be well. But the truth is like something clicked inside of me and it's this strength and survival, Christy, that 
then I didn't even realize where it came from. And I was just able to go through life, you know, take care of my child. And I, I got married, had other children. Essentially, what I did was I learned the life of survival from the women that uh, I grew up watching, which was amazing because it actually helped me survive. But the older that I got and the closer that I get to the age of 40, I started to realize something is not right. I was at the verge of um, turning 40. So, you know, this is like a cliche as women when I'm about to turn 40, but this is like real. It happened with me. So, so I'm laying in my bed. I'm at the verge of turning 40 and I'm asking myself, okay, there has to be more in life than what's going on in my life right now. You have to remember I'm an entrepreneur. I have, I'm married and my children are doing well. So from the outside looking in, everything seemed so perfect. But from the inside, I was slowly dying inside. I felt like I did not, I didn't have a voice. So then I started to recollect on my life and to just go through all my life experiences. And that's when I, I started thinking like, okay, I've been surviving all my life. I haven't had a voice. My voice has been suppressed. I've been living a life where I'm putting everybody's needs before mine. I feel depleted. I'm exhausted. I'm disempowered. Honestly, I was feeling unfulfilled. And I was like, I can't continue to live like this anymore. So I continue to just lay in bed as I'm reflecting. So I get up and get off my bed. Step, you know, like, I'm just like, okay, something has to give, something has to give. I get on my knees and I start crying. Like I'm just shedding. I couldn't just do it anymore. What I felt was I was tired of carrying the false armor of strength mm, that's that good. us women carry. It was so heavy. In my soul, it was so heavy. I just couldn't take it anymore. And that's when I decided then it's like, I have to do something. I have to make a change in my life. And with me making this change, I have to make sure that I help women get that change too by finding their voice. So essentially, I learned from those women how to survive and be the best woman that I can be because I tell you without them, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. But unfortunately, what I also realized is that they didn't have a voice. And that's how loud whispers started coming. Wow. And um, I tell people the story. Most people, when you start a business, you write down different names. For me, honestly, it was sent to me by God. I woke up one morning. I've always envisioned myself helping women, even when I was younger, but I didn't know why. Right. I didn't realize that it's because of my own life experiences. And it just came to my spirit, loud whisper. And I asked myself, why loud whisper? It's when I realized that a lot of women are screaming for help on the inside, but no one hears them because it comes out as a whisper. Mm -hmm. So I made it my mission, my passion, and I feel it's my calling to help as many women as I can to help them find their voice, that little loud whisper, and turn it into a mighty role so they can stand up for themselves own their life, become authors of their own life story, and ultimately be free because freedom is all that we're looking for. You know what? That is so good. And, and we, what we do, uh, both of us is very similar because mm -hmm. I have, I, you know, I've helped over almost 300 women uh, get their stories out, but I've spoken to probably another 500 more. Yeah. And the common thread is that they've lived their whole life. Something happened, right? There's mm -hmm. usually their story. They want to share it because there's something that happened in their life, but they realized that they've been kind of almost like you said earlier, they've been in survival mode. They, they just uh, keep putting their head down. They just do it. They're, they're not really able to kind of transition into doing what lights them up. And exactly. a lot of it's because they, their voice, they, they've just they don't have a voice. Yeah. I mean, years of, for whatever reason, feeling mm -hmm. you're not good enough, not important. And more importantly, putting everybody else first, because as a mom, we tend to kind of devote our energy to the life of others, our kids, especially. Right. 
um, and everybody else, right? Yeah. And then we get put on the back burner. You know. Exactly. And just like you mentioned, and you're absolutely correct, especially with me working with my clients, with my own life journey, I start to realize something happened that our little hearts were broken as little girls and our voices were suppressed. So even as we go through life in survival mode and we're good at what we do, we're boss women, we're so great. We're not connected to our hearts, right? We're not connected to that intuition, that voice inside of you, because it's been told to be silenced. And for years and years and years, you start not feeling good enough or shut up or women, you cannot speak depending on where you are. Culturally, you're just raised to be quiet. You're raised to not speak your voice. And this is the life that women, we live all our lives. And essentially what that does is we end up betraying ourselves because we have got no boundaries, right? We don't say no. We live, as I mentioned earlier, we live our life based on other people's opinions and expectations. And the hardest thing for me was to come to this realization is um, we have all these expectations as women that we have to meet. But the expectations that we're going after were based on society. Society put all these expectations. You have to be a strong woman. You have to be this and you have to be that. But essentially what I've come to realize through my journey and my own work is we're already strong, right? God created us strong. We bring life into this world. How much more strength does a woman need? Even if you don't have children, you're still nurturing somebody. So you're still in that space. But what society has done is it measures the strength of a man by how much weight a man can carry, but it measures the strength of a woman by how much pain we can endure. So for instance, Christy, if you're going through a divorce or you're, um, you lost a child or you're just you're being abused, you know what people will say? Oh my gosh, she is so strong. That is not strength. We have to start realizing that strength comes from being vulnerable. That form of strength comes from society's expectations of strength. Our strength is tapping into that intuition that I teach women to tap into because that's your God-given right. You tap into that intuition, that strength has humility, it's humble, and it will set you free. So that's what I want women to start focusing on, getting Ooh. connected to the intuition inside of them, not the intuition or expectation that society has placed on women. Wow. Wow. That is so good. And I'm really happy that you uh, mentioned your quote about the strength of a man is measured by how much weight he can lift, mm -hmm. yet the strength of a woman is measured by how much emotional, emotional pain, pain she, she can endure. endure. Yeah. 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 And we feel as though if we're in pain, oh, I'm strong. I don't, I no longer subscribe to that strong woman. Um, I don't, Kate, I don't subscribe to that anymore because it's left me broken. When I needed help, I never asked for help because everybody considered me strong. I was a single right. mother. I was abused. I was surviving all my life. So there are days when I needed help, right? But I never asked for help because everywhere I went, people saw me struggling and they considered me strong. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know what? It's funny I was broken. I was not strong. <laughs> you know what? I'm kind of the same way. I very rarely do people offer help to me. You know, mm -hmm. I was a single person mom, I, you know, raised my kids all by myself. And yeah. of course my mom, my parents stepped in, but they saw me as strong. So they thought, mm -hmm. oh, she's got this, you know, mm -hmm. she's got this all covered. She's strong. She can do it. But inside we're like a little child yeah. and we need help, right? We yeah. need that. We need that. In help. A sense. And it, it's a natural form of life. And I, I believe to the core, to the core of my being, Christy, that God never created us to survive he created us to thrive thrive yes i love that <laughs> i actually wrote that down on my notes when you talked about survive yeah. um so this is really good so we're going to take a quick break uh okay. thank you for sharing your story and we're going to get back into some 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 tactical strategies okay. so the audience can kind of see sure. how they can kind of transition from this survival mode to being able to thrive. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Hold on tight, everybody. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Overcoming Mediocrity Project. Are you ready to share your story in a life-changing book with other success-driven women? Then 
what if you could use that book to get speaking gigs, podcast interviews, and possibly a new client or two? Wouldn't that be great? Well, watch out, chicken soup. Here comes Overcoming Mediocrity. Our proven system can transform your struggle story into a powerful signature message and then as one chapter in an Amazon best-selling book. Our process is simple and economical, and it will bring a lot of eyeballs on you, your business, and your big message to the world. We welcome you to apply to join our project. Just visit us at overcomingmediocrity.org and click on the apply button at the top of the page. We'll see you soon. Oh, welcome back, everybody. Christy and Isabel here, and we are talking about how you, as a strong woman, can take off your false armor of strength and learn how to tap into your intuition and go from surviving to thriving. Did I get that right, Isabel? You got it absolutely right. I love it. Yes, we, we want to remove that false armor of strength, number one, and we want to start thriving and not surviving because surviving leaves us depressed, anxious, resentful. And as I mentioned earlier, that's not how God created us to be. But I want to talk to you women a little bit. It's about not good just, for our health either. So it I know not. it like increases our cortisol and, you know, when high we're blood in pressure, that, a lot yes. of women dying from high blood pressure. And I say it's truly not high blood pressure, it's heartache. So your body mm -hmm. lets you know because you can't speak when your voice is suppressed. You're suppressing your feelings. You're suppressing everything internal about you. So that what happens is your body starts reacting. You get high blood pressure, you get a headache and everybody's like, you're getting all these sicknesses. I believe your heart is hurting. It is your heart. That's why it's important to get connected, build that bridge and get connected to your heart. And um, you said, we'll talk about a little bit of strategies. They just a uh, few things that I really, really want to talk about some of my powerful principles, but I have a couple of questions. I mean, imagine, just imagine what your life would be like if you trusted your voice. Just imagine a life of freedom, peace, and joy, where you're embracing your power in its fullness, right? Knowing who you are, where you're meant to be exactly, good, bad, or indifferent. It is your life and your journey. And what I do is mostly when I talk to my um, clients, my biggest thing is most people know if you follow me, my biggest, biggest, biggest thing is you got to know who you are. Mm. That's one of my powerful principles. You have to know who you are to the core of your being. Because if you don't know who you are to the core of your being, you will continue to live your life based on other people's expectations and opinions of who you are or who you should be. You will continue to put everybody's needs before you. You will live an unfulfilled life on a hamster wheel, just going, 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 pleasing everybody and essentially betraying yourself. So knowing who you are is really, really one of my core powerful principles. And once you begin on that journey, my next step is I teach people how to be honest, right? We have to be honest with ourselves. Where are we at in life? What is happening? Because if we're not honest with ourselves, we cannot move forward because after being honest with, with yourself, I talk about acceptance. Until you accept where you are in life, no matter what it looks like to you or everybody else, you won't be able to move. You will stay stuck. So you could have this amazing job and you're making all this money, but you're miserable inside because you've not accepted the truth of who you are. You've not really tapped into yourself, right? And as women, we continue to just give, 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 give. We get lost in all that. We get lost in all those roles and we make those roles our identity. They bring value to who we are. But guess what? That dies down. That fizzles away. I want women to get to a point where you're so grounded to who you are, to the core of your being, that no matter how the wind blows, left, right, center, back, forward, you still stay grounded with your voice, trusting your intuition so you can live your life filled with peace, joy, and ultimately freedom. I want women to be free. Be free that is to good. be yourself. I know a lot of women, um, I know you have more principles here, but I know yeah. a lot of women get so wrapped up in their identity of who, 
who what they do. They feel that they have to be right. Like I have to mm-hmm. be the mom. I have to be the best wife. I have to be, you know, the entrepreneur yeah. that does this in their business or this job. But when that is all stripped away, and like you said, if the wind blows a different direction, and now you're kind of left with none of that. Mm-hmm. How are you going to feel? Exactly. And if we're not, if we're not owning and and believing in our identity, who we are, mm-hmm. then all of these other things can just knock us off of our feet. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> I mean, so easily because what happens is that we start to get value from the outside world. And yeah. this is what I always preach to women. We're always ch- chasing. I, I went through a time in my life where I say I used to edit myself, constantly editing what I looked, how I spoke, you know, am I educated enough? Am I good enough? I had the uh, imposter syndrome and I went through all that. I caught I was editing myself, but I was editing myself to become somebody who does not exist because the person I was trying to become was the pr- person based on other people's opinions of who I should be. I got tired, really exhausted of chasing that person, of trying to become that person because that person never existed, I had to come back and tap into myself and really see myself, see my broken pieces, see my little heart as a little girl broken and start putting those pieces together and mending myself. And um, my second principle is, I'll just tell you this really quick. You got to believe in something bigger than yourself. That's what helped me put my pieces together. When I was broken and I'm laying on the ground, I'm crying, I'm exhausted, I don't have the energy. I started believing in something that was bigger than myself. It gave me courage. It gave me strength. It gave me might. It gave me the willpower to say, although you're broken, get up and keep going. I got you. Get up and keep moving. So I really want to empower and encourage all the women that are listening to your show today, Christy, to really take the time to get to know who they are to the core of their being, right? To really take the time to know the truth of who they are, no matter what it looks like. This is your life. It is your journey. It is your path. And last but not least, believe in something bigger than yourself, something that will carry you when you don't even have the energy to get out of bed. Something that will light that little fire inside of you that will help you tap into your voice, your intuition, because we ignore that voice a lot because we're so used to hearing everybody else's voices. Our own voices have become foreign. It's like a foreign language when it's telling you what to do. You're like, oh, my gut instinct. No, that's God talking to you. That's the higher power talking to you. That is your intuition talking to you. It's not your gut instinct. So slow down and listen, slow down and pay attention. The richness in your life is when you take it step by step and stop chasing what you will never catch because there is nothing to catch on this journey. It's all about learning and unlearning. Yeah, that is so good. I mean, one of the, there's one of my favorite songs Uh, the words are, how would you feel when you, or how are you going to feel when you wake up and you're, you realize that you're never going to find what you are chasing. Mm. Like we're never going to find it where we keep chasing something instead of looking inside, looking inside, right. Right. We're chasing, we're chasing the own, the end of this journey is six feet underground. There's no need to be chasing. This is a marathon. Like people say, it's not a sprint. But I'm telling you, there's so much richness in stillness. There is so much richness in it because as women, we're already powerful beings. So imagine if everything that you did came from the inside of who you are. Right. Yeah. So we can stop doing and, and, and being, embrace being. And start yes. being. Yeah. You start being. When you start being, everything starts to make sense, right? Yeah. Even, even if... You, you find yourself like you've lost everything, right? You know, you have yourself. I can get this back. I'm going through it. If you're going through a divorce, right? It's not the best thing. If you've lost a child, if you're being abused and you want to leave, slow down and listen, trust that voice, trust it. All it right. Will carry you. 
Yes. This is so good. So I know um, you work with your clients and I know you yes. have a free gift. So if yes. somebody wants to connect with you, um, we're going to make sure in the show notes, there is a link to your free gift where okay. you're helping people. Tell us a little bit about what that free gift is. Okay. So my free gift is um, because sometimes people really want to know what I do. And so my, the best way for me to do it, if you're skeptical or when, you know, when it's time to make a change, we're always afraid. Fear always comes in. You don't have to be afraid anymore to contact me. So what I've done is I've given you four of my powerful principles that will help you begin the journey yourself. It has um, a few principles in there, a few questions, some really powerful questions to help you really start asking yourself this journey. I mean, asking yourself about what do you want in life? Who are you? And getting to know yourself, right? So once you start on that journey, you can contact me, we can do a deep dive, or you can contact somebody else. But I just want all women to be able to begin this journey. So yes, please get that free gift and start your journey. Okay. So the link for that will be in the show notes below. And I want to thank you. This was so much fun. Thank you so Uh, much, Christy. I appreciate it. I'm going to have you on my podcast too. (laughs) Oh, good. Yay. But Um, get ready guys. (laughs) Yes, for sure. This is going to, we'll continue the conversation. I love that. And uh, thank you audience for sticking with us to the end. I know this was a great episode. And if you learned anything that you thought was just, you know, really powerful to you. If you took notes, I know I have two pages of notes here. (laughs) Uh, Make sure that you share that with somebody, you know, somebody you love another woman in your life, because we actually learn better by teaching other people. And so not only will you be able to absorb more of what you learn, but now you're helping somebody else. You're paying it forward. So please do that. And of course, Um, We would really appreciate you subscribing to our show, uh, reviewing it, rating it. The more support and love we get from our audience, the better chance we have of continuing to get amazing guests like Isabel. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Such an honor. Thank you. Absolutely. So thanks, everybody. And we will see you on the next show. And thanks, Isabel. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams once they've learned the art of mastering their story. Mastering our stories is the key to everything we want in life. Our stories can either hold us back or they can propel us to new heights. We can choose. You can choose. Choose to overcome mediocrity with us. Let's achieve greatness together. To learn more, visit www.overcomingmediocrity.org. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast.